Josh McCurley, um, level two magic judge. I am our events coordinator. And yeah, that's pretty much my role here. I uh, fill in a lot for other duties as assigned by management. <laughs> I'm Kyle. I'm a twin, 27. <laughs> Born and raised here in Plano. I am the anytime they need something fixed, anytime they need something done, go to guy. Logan Davis, an avid board gamer for most of my life. Not so good, but avid video gamer as well. I am uh, one of the assistant managers. Um, a lot of people usually come in, it's the I'm the board game guy. Uh, a lot of people come up to me for board game recommendations, or it's the uh, one of my favorite games to play with customers is hey, we played a game. I don't remember the name of it, but it played like this. It was stressful, like not knowing what was going to happen and me personally, I mean, dealing with kids being out of school, not coming to work, it's like, it was a, every couple of day thing thinking, okay, what are we doing next? Yeah, this, this shop has been my favorite place to shop for the 20 years that I've lived here. So having only kind of been working with you guys for about a year and a half, uh, you know, I didn't want to see it close, and I knew that our economy was going to take a hit with with the shutdown. And uh, so everything that I felt I could do to help was it was I enjoyed it. It was but stressful thinking that this shop could could go the way of you know, a lot of the restaurants in Texas. Stress level was higher, but it was a different amount of stress. It was a different type of stress. It was like, I was honestly worried. First thing I thought of is, did I actually make the right decision doing sure. this? I mean, when this all happened, I was like, wow. I took a leap that I've never taken before. I've always chosen the safe path. I said, screw that. Let's, I'm for the first time, I want to go. Uh -huh. And I went and I'm like, this happened. And I was like, oh crap. Every day it was coming in, I mean, I had sleepless nights, I was restless, I mean, I, I wasn't sure, and it just seemed surreal. It really seemed surreal, like it shouldn't have even be going on, and it was. Not knowing the state of the world from day to day was really, it was a pretty high anxiety point for like me and my wife. I mean, my, my son didn't care, he's a teenager, but <laughs> um, like, I mean, every day is, you know, not knowing what was going on or you know, like worried about our older family members and things like that. That it was, it was, it was actually really stressful to not know what was going to happen. After about a week or two of like internally freaking out, and screaming, and existential dread, <laughs> um, I just sort of had to become zen about it and accept that this was a permeation of the new nor new normal. That maybe we're not gonna always you know tomorrow may not be the same as today like it always has been you know so it's just sort of had to be able to roll with the punches a little bit more and be less rigid and strict with just my day-to-day -day stuff you know, having to look at my phone to see what day it was being able to have a regular schedule and, and be able to see more than just the people in my house <laughs> you know <laughs> beginning of this before it all started with the, the pandemic we I got sick for about a week and since we didn't I couldn't get tested I was quarantined in my room for 12 days I was lucky enough to have roommates where we can actually entertain ourselves play video games play magic play board games I was more worried about the store like more worried about us trying to reopen and trying like when it's gonna happen when I'm gonna be able to go back to work when I'm going to be able to actually go help people again, but more or less get out of my house. For me, it was really weird because um, literally the weekend prior, I had gotten sick with a fever and was home. And then the day before the day I was supposed to come back to work, I get the call that, hey, we're not opening, stay home and shelter in place. I was talking with the boss, I was like, no, we're going to take care of you, you're going to be all right. And that took care of most of the panic and just the from day to day it was I would try to relax and I'd just be anxious about thinking about the store and people and like um, I have a lot of people up here that I would call friends and this is the only way I see them 
Um, so it was me going through and trying to track down some people on Facebook that like, just every day I tried to touch bases with one person, like, how are you doing today? And then going into April, it started getting just a little bit more anxiety and it's like, okay, check in with the boss, everything's still going all right. Um, and then at one point it was the, well, we, we the, we're gonna have to furlough some people, you're still staying on, and then that was at the point when, uh, middle of April, where we reopened uh, for curbside only. And I was one of the few that got to come back to do that, and it was um, a really neat experience seeing uh, some of the really, really regular um, customers come up and like, we don't care what we're buying, we're just buying stuff to support the store. And it was the um, reassurance that the community wanted to take care of us, as well as us wanting to take care of them. So there's that, that mutual uh, symbiosis. It was a real concern, you know, and like, I knew that, I knew that I would be okay, but not everybody would have been, and, you know, I mean, luckily I've got other sources of income, so I wasn't worried about that, but not, not everybody does, and, and it made me, like I said, worry about my friends and be concerned about them. I, I think it would have been an earth-shattering, crippling blow to the DFW gaming community. And, and, you know, it's there are people that drive here from Oklahoma that I see on a regular basis that wouldn't be able to... I mean, you know, they're driving two hours to come in, and I see them every couple of weeks. Like, it's it, it would have a far-reaching impact and I don't think it would be immediately known. I think it would take quite a while before everybody realized how big of a role we actually play. I've, I've had dinner with customers because we've become friends after seeing them one to two times a week for three years. You know, it's, it's, these are people, like this is, these are my people and not not having them around would really it would be a blow to my social circle as well you know I mean it's there would definitely be some holes that would be weird to have to fill I'm glad we're back I'm glad we're doing what we're doing and trying to get back on our feet but yeah I was scared I, I don't try to focus on fears more often than not just because it's a bad mindset to put yourself being scared for nothing or being scared over something you can't change is not something you should worry about There were short rushes of people and it was nice to see people back in the store. They were very happy that the store was open, but it certainly wasn't as busy a day as the store normally has. Definitely nice seeing, especially not just new customers, but our regular customers come back in, our subscribers, you know, and me being the person I am, I want to hug everybody. <laughs> I'm like, you're back. Um, but yeah, no, it's- No hugging. There's still no hugging. <laughs> it's good to see community and especially our regulars when they come in and they're like so glad you guys are back here like we missed you guys you know and uh it's not it is nice to see people coming back in and and even the phone calls we get hey are you guys open or are you just doing curbside stuff no no we're open 11 9 every day come on in i think a lot of the customers are finding during the shutdown we did a lot of rearranging right added a lot of new product there's more excitement there's more vibrance you know all of our employees, you know, I mean, seeing them again and, you know, everybody seems to have, you know, a positive spin right now. It seems good. We're seeing more people come in to the store. It's really, it's really uplifting. I, I, I have no fear. I have no anxiety at this point. Madness the store it was an epic adventure into your nerd side. Everybody here is a giant family. We fight, we disagree, we don't get along all the time, but we care about each other. And especially with both Chris's, that they, they take care of us. They took care of us during the pandemic. You guys are my family. We try to treat everyone as family. Like, you're not just usually a customer here. If we get to know you, we ask you questions. It's good to know your kids. I have 
regulars where I've actually watched them have a kid and that kid grew up and that kid's now a little person with board game tastes or comic book tastes all their own and it's just really amazing to watch and uh, on a level it's their kind of family to us um, and then just getting to know all the staff and uh, there's nothing I wouldn't do for these guys so it's just it's more of a family than a job even Kyle even Kyle right. Right on. he he's he's the black sheep of the family if that makes any sense yeah right on <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs>thing I'm most excited about is uh, I've been thinking about getting back into DJing and so I've been pricing equipment and things have changed since the last time I, I spun records 15 years ago so it's, it's a vastly different world and I'm gonna have to learn new stuff but I'm sort of excited by that. I know a lot of our customers are looking forward to having the gaming area open <laughs> someday yeah. and uh, but you know hopefully with the uh, discount comics that are there, the stuff that was found in the warehouse, and uh, some of the uh, RPG stuff that's coming out from mm -hmm. some older stuff from the warehouses. Hopefully that'll give people some things to look through and get ready for until the gaming space can be opened up. Building, I say building, but getting Madness, the atmosphere back, because that's what Madness is. Being able to get with the customers again, interact more with them have the you know the gaming reopened i'm really looking forward to being able to board game again that to me that, that that's huge yeah i've been doing some lessons for off and on for about nine years now and it's i'm just glad that we're doing that again it's of course got extra precautions smaller classes i wear a really silly looking face shield i feel like a welder I, the one thing i'm super excited for um i don't know when it's going to be is reopening the game side like, I'm, I'm excited for people to start coming back to game. Um, another thing I'm super excited for at the moment is, uh, like, just watching the uh, sheer number of families pick up board gaming and D&D. &D. We've had days where our D&D &D section is decimated. It's talking with moms that are coming in and dads that are coming. They're picking it up not to play it with friends, but to play it with their kids. And that's just really, really neat. There's a game for anybody, regardless of um, if you think you're a gamer or not, there is a game you will enjoy. Like, I came into, I, I worked here not playing Magic before, not playing board games before, not playing D&D before. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Because there's something here for everybody.